Hey everyone, welcome back for a brand new video about that show where karate can solve and cause all of life's problems, Cobra Kai. Warning, beyond this point there are some pretty big spoilers for people who are not up to date on the YouTube original gone Netflix series Cobra Kai, as well as the Karate Kid film franchise. We wanted to start the video by thanking everyone for showing our first Cobra Kai video so much love. All of the comments and theories from all of you have really shown us how big of a following this series has and we can't wait to find out who's going to die in January. We plan on covering any major updates or events in the series from now on. To show you how much we appreciate you, we will be doing a prize giveaway for this photo autographed by William Zabka with a certificate of authenticity. All you have to do is subscribe if you haven't already and type Cobra Kai never dies in our comment section below. Cobra Kai never dies! We will be doing a drawing from all the names and selecting a winner on January 8th, so good luck and enjoy binging. In this video, we're going to give you our binge breakdown of the brand new trailer just released for Cobra Kai Season 3, which will be here in less than 30 days, people. We also want to take a closer look at the eight photos released earlier this week by EW and figure out what the hell Kreese Kringle is and if we need protection from it. Finally, we're going to speculate on the big season three finale, which has been hyped up pretty hard and look at some new information that might give us insight into how the next installment of Cobra Kai will end. First, let's take a look at this trailer that we have been impatiently waiting for. The opening sequence shots are ones we've already seen from the season 2 finale where Johnny is being a sad sack on the beach, and the season 1 finale when Miguel won the tournament. During these shots, we hear some dialogue that is from season 3, and the fourth shot here reveals Johnny is talking to an unconscious Miguel, and it's heartbreaking. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I failed you. After that, the trailer cuts back to some of the highlights of the infamous West Valley High karate battle until the worst shot of all time. It never gets easier to watch. Following that moment, the trailer cuts to Hawk in a couple of Cobra Kai red shirts back in the high school hallway. It looks like he's talking to Johnny here, telling him that the kids paid the price because Johnny got soft. What do you think? Is Miguel's injury Johnny's fault? Should Miguel have broken Robbie's arm? During Hawk's speech, we see another repeat shot from season two when Daniel confronted Johnny in the Cobra Kai dojo while Kreese watched. The following shot shows Tori unloading on a punching bag in the dojo while we get a look at Hawk in a very very similar shot from the teaser trailer released in October, only this time we see how his knuckles got so bloody. This shot also confirms our original theory that Hawk turned his moon tattoo into a grim reaper now that we've been given a closer look. The question is, who is Hawk beating down here? We'll get into that more soon. The next set of shots are all from the season 2 finale when Johnny walks away from the dojo and when he leaves the beach and smashes a beer on his sweet ride. After the Netflix logo splash, we get a wide, sweeping, establishing shot of the valley, and then we're once again reminded that Miguel is lying in a hospital bed looking pretty messed up while his mom and abuela look at him somberly. The next shot shows us an extended version of Johnny and some bars that we saw in the teaser trailer. There's been a lot of debate about whether or not he's in a cell or visiting Robbie. The thing is, Robbie would only be behind bars when he was in a holding cell, which generally doesn't allow visitors. Even if that kind of visitation happened, if you look at the guy behind Johnny in the corner, it appears he's putting his hands up against the wall. It doesn't really seem like what someone would do on the outside of a holding cell in a police station. That would probably make cops nervous, right? The following shot shows us the moment Robbie gets caught and he looks like shit as the officer gets ready to take him away. What we want to look closer at is the first shot in this sequence. This guy here seems to be reasoning with Robbie and talking with his hands. If we look at a shot that occurs later in the trailer, we notice the jacket is zipped up in that same way. This tells us the guy here is most likely Daniel, pleading with Robbie to turn himself in peacefully. The question is, how did Daniel get there at the moment of Robbie's arrest? What do you think? Could Daniel have set up and turned in his star student? The next sequence, we see Daniel's daughter walking into school, and it's clear that the karate war sparked by Sam's kiss has increased security. This is probably going to make both dojos unpopular amongst the student body, but it's tough to say how much of the plot will involve the school. After that, we see Tori looking ready to go out, counting some small bills. Could she be waitressing? Might she have dropped out of school after the fight? She does look concerned with how much money she has. The next shot cuts back to the high school where Dimitri, Chris, and Nathaniel run into Hawk and Mitch. From Nate's eyeline, it appears Bert might be with them as well. Will we get another epic Nate versus Bert fight in season three? Dimitri looks scared while Hawk has zero emotion. We are scared for Dimitri. 
Hawks seems to be getting tougher and more ruthless each season, and we're not sure if Dimitri can keep up. After a fade to black, the trailer cuts to Daniel asking Johnny a question. The only way to end this is by working together. So, what do you say? That's right, everyone. That team-up is definitely coming. We want to point out that the shot here is from the same scene as this moment from the teaser trailer. Notice that Daniel is wearing the same windbreaker as he was when Robbie got arrested. We now think it's possible that Johnny could have been there during Robbie's arrest as well. We believe that Johnny may even have interfered with the arrest and been arrested himself, which would explain a beat up Johnny in the holding cell and Daniel bailing him out the same day since he was there and now obviously is taking responsibility for at least some of the chaos that led to Miguel's injury. What do you think? Will Johnny fight a cop? The next shot gives us a ray of hope that we've seen before, Miguel waking up. After that, we get a shot that tells us Kreese has been doing some remodeling as the entryway into the dojo is now painted dark gray and has one of the main Cobra Kai tenants painted on it instead of the logo. This tells us Daniel is going into the dojo sometime after Miguel's injury. Could he be here on a peacemaking mission or to confront Kreese? It is late at night and Kreese for some reason seems happy to see LaRusso in his dojo. What do you think? Could Daniel have stepped into a trap? If we look at this shot from the earlier teaser trailer, the background and time of day seem to match up. Are we going to get to see Daniel fight Kreese? We believe so and can't wait to find out how it all goes down. Following that moment, we cut back to the dojo during the day as Kreese seems to have bought a Cobra Kai mascot. How cute. This Kreese seems to be uninjured, so this is most likely before whatever fight he has in the dojo. After that, we get an older season one shot of Kyler picking on Eli before he became Hawk. And then we get confirmation on something we covered in our last video, the return of Kyler. As many fans suspected, he is trying to join Cobra Kai. Hawk looks back at the guy who used to terrify him and Kyler stands his ground. What do you think? Is it Kyler on the other end of this knuckle sandwich? Will he show up just to be knocked out of the series again, or will he play a more important role this time around? You have physics? Kyler's appearance also marks the climax of the narration Kreese is giving over the entire sequence, which we'll listen to now. There is no good. Look at this freak. There is no bad. Only weak, but strong. That moment leads right into this one with Daniel and Johnny in the same outfits as earlier in a shady looking automotive shop facing three much younger and stronger looking guys. This is going to be epic people, but how do these two have this kind of beef? Is Kreese hiring thugs or could these guys be associated with Miguel's father who all we know about the guy so far is Let's just say he was a very bad man. A lot of fans think Terry Silver is Miguel's father or grandfather and we acknowledge that's still a possibility, but we just don't think so. The next shot shows us there's a fourth guy Daniel and Johnny have to worry about as Johnny seems to mentally prepare himself for the fight. The trailer then cuts to Johnny making his move. Strangely, he pushes Daniel out of the way. This makes us think these guys are here for Johnny, which is why he feels responsibility to not let Daniel get hurt. As we look at the attacker behind Johnny, we see he's got a pry bar in his hand, outnumbered versus people with weapons in a dangerous environment. Cobra Kai never dies, people. The action cuts away to Amanda LaRusso comparing the two to Tango and Cash, two buddy cops. So clearly they were investigating something illegal or taking the law into their own hands somehow. What do you think? What are the two new BFFs up to? Johnny tries to correct Daniel's wife with a technicality which Daniel finds funny until Amanda shuts Mr. Lawrence down. The next shot shows how the fight concludes as Daniel does a roundhouse kick while Johnny simultaneously sweeps the leg. Can we please have season 3 early as a Christmas present? If we ask Hayden Schlossberg and the other execs nice enough, maybe they'll at least give us one more trailer. After that, the action cuts back to the high school where Hawk and his posse are all wearing red penny jerseys. Now that Hawk is the star student of Cobra Kai with Kreese in charge, we think some bad things are bound to happen. You're about to begin your real training. The next shot shows Sam in the Miyagi-Do garden talking about a central theme of the show, who the good guys really are. What do you think? Is Kreese right? Are there no good guys, only gray areas? Following that moment, we cut back to the school exterior and we see a very out of character Dimitri go after Hawk from behind. We think Dimitri was most likely provoked, but anything is possible. Could this moment start another epic high school brawl? After that, the trailer cuts to Robbie in the detention center with an ironic bullying poster behind him. The next shot shows he is facing three bullies. We want to stop here and focus on the main tough guy, whose name is Sean. Sean recently came to our attention as the actor who was set to play this mysterious character named Elijah in season 10C of The Walking Dead. When we looked up the actor's IMDb, he showed up as appearing in three episodes of Cobra Kai season 3 as Sean. 
Now we know his role, which seems to be Robbie's antagonist, but how much insight we'll get into the character and whether he'll stay on long term is unknown, but he does seem to be pretty good with martial arts. The trailer then cuts to Robbie being kicked on the ground and grimacing in pain as the group of bullies walks away. What do you think? Is this retaliation for Miguel, somehow manipulated from the outside by Cobra Kai, or are these guys friends with Robbie's old criminal buddies? Will Robbie use his karate to take the bullies down? Following that moment, we see Sam in action flipping over some guy here, and then the action cuts to Tori entering in an extended version of the shot from the teaser trailer. Is this the moment where we get a Tori and Sam rematch? The trailer is most likely edited out of order here, as it then cuts back to Sam after she flipped the guy from the first shot. Who is this guy? Is he with Tori? Why does Sam still look scared? The next shot cuts back to the Miyagi-Do garden, as Daniel tells Sam she can't run away from her problems. What do you think? What or who is the problem she's running away from? After that, the trailer cuts inside of the Miyagi-Do dojo as Sam and Daniel's son are training with bow staffs. Staff fights, people. This season is not f***ing around. Following the happy dojo moment, the trailer punches us in the gut as Miguel says this. I might never be able to- Cut! Never. Can't. Those are just words. They're meaningless. What if he can't walk again? Johnny responded the best way he could, but what if Miguel is permanently disabled? What do you think? Will the Cobra Kai OG crane kick ever again? The following shot is one of the most interesting of the trailer. Amanda is confronting Kreese alone in the dojo. What the fuck? Has she lost her mind? We were thinking that she and Daniel might be headed for divorce, but this sequence has us scratching our heads. What could make her come down and do this? Could Samantha have been seriously injured or even killed by Tori? Does Kreese have a redemption arc coming or is he doubling down on the dark side? After the trailer tells us to forget old acquaintances, we get a shot of Johnny walking into the dojo, walking like he's ready for a fight. Could he be following either Amanda or Daniel after their separate confrontations with Kreese? The next shot shows a scared-looking Sam, and then we see why she's scared. Why is Tori at Miyagi-Do, and what dirty tricks does she have up her sleeves? Could this be why Amanda brings the ruckus to Cobra Kai? After that, the trailer cuts back to Robbie, who has been in another fight in the detention center and is smiling at someone who we think might be Sean. Why is he smiling? Has Robbie just beat his bullies down, or are they karate buddies now? The trailer then cuts back to Johnny in the same shirt as he was in the previous shot, kicking the door down to the back room of Cobra Kai. We've never seen Johnny this angry. What do you think? What has Johnny this pissed? Could Robbie be hurt badly or even dead? The next two shots look like flashbacks from the season one finale at the All Valley Tournament. Miguel is clearly contemplating the fight he has in front of him, which seems to be learning to walk again. That's really depressing. It looks like Miguel will be sidelined most of the season based on the footage coming up, but we'll let you be the judge. The next shot cuts back to Robbie, who has a nice shiner and is being visited by Kreese. There's definitely some weird stuff going on that we can't understand yet in this season, people. What do you think? What does Kreese want with Robbie? As that sequence wraps up, so does Johnny's speech to Miguel. If you want something, you have to crawl across the floor. Use your damn teeth if you have to. After another title card, the action cuts to Johnny doing Cobra Kai's version of physical therapy with Miguel. This part is the most gut-wrenching moment of the whole trailer. I'm always going to be right here next to you. Because I'll always be your teacher. After that, the sequence leads to its climax as Miguel tries to get up out of bed and fails spectacularly. Oh, shit. It's alright, you felt like a champ. Johnny keeps the pep talk going and the trailer then cuts to Okinawa, a shot we first saw in the original Season 3 teaser. The next shot is also one we've already seen of Daniel looking upset. The trailer is edited to seem like he is reacting to an old photo of his old sensei, but there's no way to tell for sure. Shout out to the man, the myth, the Miyagi. The trailer then confirms a blast from the past is returning. Daniel's Japanese love interest from Part 2 is back. Could this mean the end of his marriage? Or is Kumiko just a quick cameo for fan service? After that, we see Daniel in a bar with a floral pattern shirt on, which makes us think he's in Okinawa. The trailer is edited to appear like Chozen is confronting Daniel here as the narrating dialogue ramps up the action. Mr. Miyagi taught me everything you know. Let us find out. Here we see a rematch of the final battle from the original sequel in what appears to be Chozen's dojo. Will the two be friendly after this fight? What does Chozen have to tell Daniel about Miyagi that he doesn't already know, which has been set up since the first teaser? The trailer cuts mid-battle to the Season 3 title card, at which point we're reminded we have to wait until a week after New Year. We then get a shot of a concert for Twisted Sister frontman D. Snyder, which we're sure is Johnny approved, and we see that Miguel is in the crowd, still seated. That's some bullshit. 
After another title card, we see the last shot of Johnny at what appears to be a wedding or fancy Christmas party. What do you think? Who could be getting married? This one is another head scratcher, but Johnny looks sharp in that white suit. After one last title card, the Netflix logo splashes in and we're left wanting more and counting down the days to January 8th. Now let's look at those season 3 photos just released this week by EW. In another weird combination, we have Chris sitting between Daniel and Johnny in some kind of theater or auditorium. They all look very serious. Could this be at the school where they're talking about the massive karate war that's going on, or is this just some kind of weird nightmare Daniel is having? This photo of Daniel and Amanda seems to take place at the police station and the couple appear to have heard something shocking. Is it possible Robbie will be charged as an adult? We want to note here that Daniel is in the same shirt as the season 2 finale, so this is probably from the season 3 premiere. The next photo is also most likely from that same episode as Johnny is visiting Miguel in the same clothes as the finale, but no new info here. After that, we see a shot of Hawk and Tori training together at Cobra Kai. Could the two end up being the next power karate couple? Following that, we get a shot of an awkward-looking moment between Daniel and Sam. Could this be the moment Daniel tells Sam he's getting a divorce? Why does she look so pissed at her dad? The next pic shows us Robbie's sleeping arrangements, which sucks for him, but at least he can stand up and stretch his legs. After that is another shot at the Cobra Kai Dojo with some new students, but no real story info here. The final picture seems to be on the soccer field of Dimitri, possibly talking to Sam, but again we don't really find out any other information about the story. Now let's take a look at Kreese Kringle, which is a sort of elf on the shelf that Cobra Kai creators started tweeting about earlier this week. Apparently there are some free giveaways of a festive looking Kreese cutout. If you don't win one, you can still print out your own and take pictures of your unique hiding spot so it can be featured somewhere on Netflix's promotions. If you do take any pics with Kreese Kringle, please send them to us also so we can put you in our next video. Next up, we'd like to talk about the season 3 finale, which has been hyped up pretty hard by showrunner John Horowitz. Look at the date on his tweet, guys. He's had all of season 3 for at least a year before we get it. That's just cruel, John. Obviously, the finale is going to be epic, but we found something interesting on Reddit when someone with the great username of Master Improvement noticed an interesting detail on the Writers Guild of America page for season 3. For the penultimate and final installments of the season, both episodes say they are written by Robert. Mark Kamen. Now, Robert Mark Kamen is credited as a writer on IMDb for every episode, but the fact that he's singled out here for the WGA's purposes is significant. For those who don't know, Kamen is the guy who wrote the original Karate Kid trilogy. What's even cooler is that the first movie is based on his real life. As a teenager, Bronx-born Kamen was jumped by a group of thugs outside the New York World Fair in 1964. Kamen decided to learn martial arts to defend himself and first learned from a former Marine who emphasized violence and revenge. Remind you of anyone? After getting revenge and realizing it didn't leave him fulfilled, Kamen rejected this philosophy and discovered Okinawan Goju Ryu Karate. He studied four hours a day, seven days a week under a teacher who barely spoke English but had been taught by the founder of that defensive form of karate, Chojun Miyagi. Over 50 years later, we are still fascinated by the universe spawned by Robert Mark Kamen's real life story, but what does that mean for the Cobra Kai season 3 finale? We believe this story is written by Kamen because it will probably draw a lot of similarities to the Karate Kid sequel, and Kamen has a master plan for the series that he was never really able to execute in part 2 as he had heavy studio influence and was actually soured on the franchise by the end of this popular sequel. What do you think? Could these episodes be his best work ever? Will the karate verse ever be the same? If Miguel dies, we riot. Thanks so much for watching our videos, everyone. As always, we're on the lookout for any new promos or leaks to help prove or disprove all the theories out there about our favorite show where people take karate way too seriously, Cobra Kai. Oh, they have worn karate dojos. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Binge Rampage. Click that notifications bell for our channel so you can see our next video as soon as it comes out. And don't forget to subscribe. There's a strategy I employed while playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I think we could do it today. You know, gather all the troops, rally them around. We can find a wood... Shh. I don't... You know nothing about warfare.